fast modern loading for your Oric, or so we hope. So here we are at the table with my Oric One, kindly donated to the channel by the Bite High No Limit podcast, all about six months ago. Check them out, some really good interviews with uh, the people behind technology such as CFAX and uh, various other things. So do check them out, link in the description below. So thanks to them for that. But my problem with the Oric, since I got it, is basically been loading software in. I did that initial system review and had to play around with it. And I had to use a modern Android device plugged into the cassette deck input in order to load stuff in. It was painful, to be honest, and very hit and miss. And I was hoping, well, there might be somewhere out there a, a modern storage solution. But, you know, events overtook me and very busy through the summer and all the rest of it. And finally, I was in a hotel room the other week and I saw this on eBay as I was browsing around board as you as you are when you're in hotel rooms. Erebus, Erebus, micro SD card reader for Oric One and Atmos computers. Now there's several versions of these knocking around on eBay and other sites and I just took a punt on on this one. Um, no reason, it's just the first one I, I saw. Um, all looks very nice. Um, what does it say? This, form, this page is formatted for printing and does not include all the information contained in the listing. Okay, what it actually says is, made with all new parts, housed in a slimline 3D printed case, included is a very useful restart button to reduce wear and tear on the power socket. Actually, I've got an on-off uh, switch on my power supply, but uh, still handy uh, to have a kind of reset button there. The device plugs into the expansion port of your Oric One or Atmos and replaces the standard system ROM with a modified one. Simply type C load and instead of accessing the tape input, the Erebus menu is loaded. Navigate up to 512 game files, 512 games on the Oric. Imagine, are there, are there that many? Ooh, downvotes coming in. Uh, on a micro SD card, boo. Uh, using the arrow keys and press enter to commence gameplay. Um, you get the device, you get the ribbon cable and a micro SD card. Each device is thoroughly tested on genuine vintage hardware before dispatch. And that was my phone going off, apologies. It's Monday afternoon, I thought it was quiet. Apparently, looking at that email, it's not going to be. But I'm going to ignore that for now, you go over there. So, um, the device, I will move the oink to one side, arrived in the post last week. And then I remembered I didn't have my Oric and had to drive 10 miles to a storage unit where I'd put my stuff pre-house move. And I thought I got all my computers back, but I hadn't because I couldn't find it in the house. I spent hours looking for it and lo and behold, in the storage unit was my Oric One, my Plus Four and my Elk all in a box. So I bought those back. But this is the device that arrived. Uh, the ribbon cable wasn't connected when I got it. Um, but I've plugged that in. I don't really want to start plugging that in and out. It is a 3D printed case and it is a little bit how you're doing. If you can see there, uh, the old strands uh, are uh, loose there and also on the SD card hole there, if you can see there. Um, yeah, I mean, there's one just gone, my fingernail there, just across the SD card. So it's a bit um, rough and ready, but homemade device. So, you know, you can't you can't have everything. And the entire thing is held together with four self-tapping screws. That one isn't fully in. That's my fault. I will explain why in a minute. It plugs into the back of your oik, like, into that socket there. If you can see that there, the, well, nothing on here is labelled, but uh, the one next to the power adapter. So it plugs in, it is notched, so uh, it faces in that way. Can I get it in? Can I get it in? By the way, different microphone from normal, and uh, obviously different kitchen, because I've moved house since uh, the last time we did anything, hence why I'm on the other side of the table. I may swap back to that side, it, it depends really. Um, better access for the lights and the microphone, but... Uh, yeah, it's going to sound very roomy because there's a lot more hard surfaces behind me this time. Window's still over there, though. Um, right. I don't want to start plugging this in. Oh, there we go. It's in. Right, OK. It is in. So it sits there like yay. Uh, the entire shebang costs... Uh, this one costs £45. 
but uh, there are many different versions. This version sold by Monkey Chemicals. There are other sellers on eBay that appear to have sold more than this one. I just bought, well, this one was actually, I wasn't even really looking. It just got recommended to me in my feed. And I, as, you, as you get bored in hotel rooms, you just go, okay, I'll buy that. I'll put it in my basket and then buy it. So that's what happens, which I suspect has most of us operate, really. Um, but what's inside should be common to them all. The build quality will be different for all of them. So it sits on the back there. Uh, you plug it in. And uh, look, let's, gonna fi let's fire up the Oricon screen capture. You type C load and uh, two exclamation marks. And you are into a menu. And you select the game you want. The... SD card is filled with tap images, and you can put your own tap images on there. Just be aware it is FAT16, so you don't need to keep to the older file name length conventions. Also, if you put it into a Mac like I did, it dumps a lot of garbage on there, which for some reason didn't get cleared off. Also, if you end up putting it in a Mac or something where it writes stuff back, remember to use something like uh, one of those utilities that erases all that hidden stuff otherwise you're going to be in a complete mess. It also uh, loads stuff on in the order you put it on. So if you load in a game that is, say, uh, begins with H, Harry Attack, say you load on Harry Attack, it will, if you load it on there onto the existing image, it will stick it right on the end after Z. So you just need to be aware of that. Games load in very quickly, just 10 seconds or so. Uh, sometimes it can appear nothing is happening and then it will suddenly spring into life. However, be aware that the ROM in here is overwriting the system ROM in the main Auric. And the ROM in the device is an Auric Atmos ROM. It doesn't mean your Auric 1, as this machine is, ta-da, can run Auric Atmos software. What it does mean is if the Oric 1 software will not run, doesn't run on the Oric Atmos, then Oric 1 software won't run on here. So it needs to be Oric 1 software that is compatible with the Oric Atmos. And I think I've seen this as a problem in a few games I've tried to load in where things have just stalled completely. So uh, just be aware of that. That said, all the popular UK titles seem to work. Loaded in Manic Miner, Hunchback, and they're all fine. They just work. They load in exactly as you'd expect them to. So from that point of view, the device is very easy to use. There's no fancy tricks like, an, like a Div MMC Future, for example, on the Spectrum where you can poke the memory, you can save snapshots and so on. This is purely, as far as I can see, and the documentation seems to be very sparse, a device to load in tap images directly to your Auric. It might be nice to be able to bypass the menu and have a display directly on here. So you could just turn the Oric on and flick through, like you can with some of the HXCs, but that would add to the cost. This thing would end up costing 100 quid, probably. Whereas for 45, 40 pounds, these seem to retail for, via def different retailers and different producers, the, um, you know, it, it's good value. And as I say, you just access everything through the uh, Oric keyboard by typing C load, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So that, from that point of view, it's very good. So the design of the device itself makes it an essential purchase for the Oric, but I think you're going to have to choose more wisely than I did with this one from eBay. Now let me uh, unplug this from the Oric. Least favourite thing. Let me not unplug it from the Oric. Oh, no, 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 I'll leave it in the Oric. Um, it would be nice to have a easy way to... Just some kind of grip on there. This is an absolute devil to get out. And of course, what you don't want to do is pull on the ribbon cable. Speaking of which, as he cuts in close, because he kicked the tripod and the camera went out of position, you must use the ribbon cable provided. It must, must be no longer than, I think this is 15 centimetres. Otherwise, it will cause lag on the Oric, apparently according to the instructions uh, online, not provided with the device to find. This one came with NAFL, how to use it. But uh, yeah, the um, if you want... Uh, you know, a longer cable, don't do it. It has to be this length maximum or you're going to have problems, apparently. Speaking of problems, then we come to this version of the device. As I move the camera over slightly and down. And I even focus you in. 
like that. Professional channel, isn't it? Now, you can probably see there a little gap there, for example, on the 3D printing with more strands coming off there, as well as the ones we saw over there, the other side. The 3D printing on this particular one is terrible. I mean, Futures 8-Bit's done a 3D printed joystick that he sent to me for Christmas and he sent it to a few other people. And he's, he's done this just in this 3D printer and it's, yeah, it's got a few marks. It's just a fun thing he did at Christmas, but there's nothing coming off it. It's got a few weird bits around there, but you know, that's 3D printing, isn't it really? And it's a very kind gift of him. It's a really great joystick. I'll be reviewing this on Chinivision 2. Um, but this is a really bad standard of 3D printing. But worse, but worse, should you want to get your SD card out, as I bring this over to shot there, so you poke your finger in there. No, no, no. That, that, they are not short fingernails, if you can see there. That's not a short fingernail. No, no, no. <laughs> now, I wanted to get this out and I started to unscrew the device. And I thought, well, I can just go in and open it up because I'm never going to be putting new SD card images on here or tap images because let's face it, the Oric is about as fashionable as flares. You go on a site like Indie Retro News, you look at new Oric games and there's not a lot. Rodman seems to be the uh, most recent significant release from the Futures 8-bit, aka Mr. Joystick, aka Rod Hull. Um, and so I thought, oh, well, I'll load, load Rodland onto here, the card, and I'll get the take the SD card out, and you just cannot get it out. So I thought I'll open it up and then get it out that way. Now, I've got three of the screws out, and one of these screws stripped itself because I suspect the person selling this has Loctited it. I could be wrong. Um, I have good quality screwdrivers. The other three screws are self-tappers, came out easily. I think screw number four was Loctited in. And that meant I ended up fiddling around with the screwdriver, pushing it into there, little screwdriver, watchmaker screwdriver to get it out, hoping I'm not damaging the SD card holder because it's so deep in. Then the SD card pings across the room because, you know, it's a miniature SD card, which I hate in these devices. Use a full size one, it's so much easier. People know we're going to be taking these cards out of the devices and putting them into our computers, which have full size SD cards, not mini ones. So, you know, why, why, why use mini SD cards? I've, I've even complained to the Futures 8 bit about the, you know, this on the superb Kung Fu Flash. It's just, it would be so much easier because it's, I use that to load stuff in all the time. You can just Take out a full-size card, pop it into your Mac, in my case, load your stuff on, pop it back in easy. Not, oh, where's my adapter? Oh, I've dropped the card. Or, in this case, it's ejected itself across the room. And I spend the next five minutes trying to find it, let alone trying to get it back in. Because, like I said, I couldn't get this thing open to get at the card holder properly. And I end up with a pair of tweezers, you know, little precision tweezers, just trying to prise it into the Scott into the slot like some terrible fairground game. It's unforgivable. It is, I know this is a homebrew device and people are doing this at home, but you know, just make this, why? Perhaps this isn't Loctited, but I think, you know, it's that one there that I stripped. Perhaps it's just got it really tight, but the, just the 3D printing quality on this is absolutely shocking. And it t takes the shine off a otherwise superb device. But luckily, luckily, there are plenty of sellers selling these on eBay. So my advice is, if you want one, don't get the one that looks like this. Um, there's a black one on offer, um, actually about five pounds cheaper by the looks of it, that uh, looks like a good bet, it looks very well produced. And critically, the seller appears to have put a very close up shot of his SD card slot on it which shows me he's got confidence it's not full of strands of plastic or just bits coming off, or you can actually get at that SD card. Come on, out you come. <laughs> you should be able to do it with your finger. You might be saying, Chin, you just use a screwdriver. That's not the point. You shouldn't have to go and find a screwdriver or a pen to get a blooming SD card out. 
No, it's jammed itself into the side of the case. Ah. Oh no, that's out, it's out, it's out, it's out. Here we go, look, oh, yay, I've extract, I mean, this is preposterous, right? This is absolutely preposterous. I've got strands of plastic everywhere. <laughs> Try and get it back in before I lose it. Oh, go in, please go in. No. Go in, go in. I'm leaving all this in. There we go, I've clicked it back in. That's just a demonstration of what a pain in the backside getting this SD card out. And this doesn't just apply to the people who are selling this device or the person selling this device. There are quite a few retro devices where um, not the Kung Fu Flash, because at least you can actually get it in and out your fingernail, um, where things are embedded. That uh, that SNES card I reviewed years ago, same problem. That was a full size SD card where if you weren't careful, your SD card would just fall inside the cartridge and you had to break it all open. Ugh. So all in all, I can recommend the device itself. The design is great. It works fantastically for the Auric. You'll be loading pretty much every bit of software you ever want, unless it's not Atmos compatible, in which case you'll probably be stuffed. But it takes away all that hassle of tape loading. As I say, I wouldn't buy this particular device from this seller, the one that looks like this, but there are plenty more on offer in the retro community and on eBay. And I would suggest if you're going to buy one, you're best off getting one of those.